Reedy. Yes, thank you. Can I start actually with David Yu, because you are a newcomer in, in this uh, <laughs> family picture and uh, representing um, uh, Georgian Railway. You probably also have your idea of top three ideas for future challenges. You are, uh, sorry, you are David. So do you, uh, do you have an, a, a wish list or something where you want to you know, say, if we go like this, digital challenge to be overcome, then, well, we are happy, smiley uh, family. Is it in a national level or international level? No, first of all, if you don't mind, I would like to take this opportunity and to congratulate Absolutely. Latvian State Railway Company for 100th anniversary on behalf okay. of Georgian Railway, 30,000 employees. And I would like to wish all the best to Marek uh, Kleinberg for his new position, new but challenging position. Thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, once again, so uh, I have minor comments, if you don't mind, regarding the pre presentations. What I saw, it was uh -huh. a fine presentation, full of information, all positive. Uh, what, we s uh, what I saw myself in presentations, we all discussed, of, of course, there about European Union, uh, Baltic Sea Corridor. Uh, we do hope with cooperation of uh, Zubr project, uh, starting from Latvia till Black Sea, all the companies, railway companies, along the route, if we we'll combine our efforts, we have a chance to see on next presentations, coming weeks, coming months, to see the Georgia as a middle corridor for Trans-Caspian transport route. Of course, uh, we have two sea to cross. It's a Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Mm -hmm. However, we have one tar open tariff policy uh, the companies who will be willing to participate and to forward the goods via uh, our corridor will have two side contract. For example, Georgian Railway and himself. Uh, I would like to inform as well, uh, if you don't mind, that in coming weeks uh, uh, we together with Azerbaijan Railway, Georgian Railway, Caspian Shipping Company, Kazakhstan uh, Shipping Company uh, and the company Grampet we will launch the feeder line from Constanza to Poti, to Georgian ports. It will take just five days to cross the Black Sea, and it will be scheduled like a scheduled block train. So per uh, month, we plan five, four, five uh, trips, uh, plus uh, good positive news for uh, Zubra project that we will launch in October as well from Odessa to Poti port, this is almost the same uh, transit time, and uh, we're not going in a new business, we just want to uh, connect Central Asia, we are Georgia, we are Middle Corridor, to Europe. Uh, Georgia is the last country which uh, will cross to go to Europe, like to Romania or to Bulgaria. Therefore, we will, uh, it will increase, uh, decrease the cost of transportation on Black Sea, minimum 40%, minimum already, and we will increase the speed. If uh, now on from Horgos to Black Sea Port, to Georgian Black Sea Port, it takes around 16 days, five to 16 days, and then the containers, the were will waiting for 10 days to cross the, 10, 15 days to cross the Black Sea, we will manage it in all together in 20 days, from China, Kazakhstan border, to the uh, Black Sea European ports already, and we go to Duisburg with Slavko and different, and of course to Riga and uh, different European and Baltic sea ports. Okay, and um, coming back to this digital uh, idea, what do you think are the top three, or maybe top one, the only thing we should, let's say, try as a solution or solve as a necessity just you know, now, if there is a bottleneck situation for something where, would it be on your new roads you develop? Would it be on a general picture of Eurasia as a continent we tried to interconnect today during a conference? I fully agree with you that it's the first and most important issue in terms of transportation, 21st century. It's the issue of multimodal, but digitalization. Uh, for your information, Georgia Railway in 2018 already established digital uh, so we have paperless work on our stations. Uh -huh. So while the cargo will be crossing the Georgian border, 
we already make customs clearance just without any paperwork. However, we have some challenging issue of this uh, issue because all the players in the corridor should follow one direction and follow digitalization as well. What I see from the nice presentations, you have like one door service, you can make it easy, uh, just a couple of one minute, two minutes, go in and fill all the required information and you get final tariff rate. So we are towards this direction, but it will take some time, of course. Okay, good. Um, now I have to switch to one, uh, some very direct question to Mr. Schwab. So now, uh, uh, one of the things was, uh, what about the price ticket, the real price, not the regulated price? I, I guess the Deutsche Bahn doesn't uh, calculate different price if you take this regional train, uh, a hydrogen uh, train, instead of uh, a kind of old-style train. But uh, the real cost, uh, it goes up or down for introduction phase? Very good question. And uh, as I've already explained, what is our model behind? As well, a service for 30 years, so we have to talk about total cost of ownership, not only investment. For sure, the investment at the moment is a little bit higher. However, and this was part of the business case I had to present to the CEO, is this business potentially running positively? And the answer is yes. There will be a break even of the total cost of ownership with existing today's prices for gasoline, for hydrogen, and energy, and maintenance cost after 10, 12 years. So this makes it interesting for operators to invest. Yeah, but this is investment side. But on no, the real life in German, uh, like Kies, when I go as a, just a ah. German uh, traveler, uh, does it make a real ticket price lower or higher? When you, you were talking about this inter... Uh, yep. link of the old yep. and the new technology, does it? Because no. normally we are used to, all, new means uh, more expensive. No, as the operator provides mobility, independent what is the traction system in the trains, there's no price difference. And what about income? Can I get better income if I run uh, hydrogen? Because Latvian yes, railway sure. company, have you, yeah. you, you didn't notice yet, but there are so many people wanting to see it. So they will go to Germany tomorrow, I understand, yes. after this tonight's you can party. Buy, you can buy the ticket at the machine for the same price running with these trains. And technically it's in rhineland Pfalz, yes? No, not in the lower Saxony, in the northern in part. Okay, so yep. we, it's even closer to Latvian borders. So yes. No problem, You've we go. <laughs> yes, you go by train to Hamburg, and then you can go with um, the train uh, to... Uh, up until now, I can't travel by train to Hamburg directly uh, from Latvia. I have to, you know, many changes. Let's probably. work with DB, and then you make it happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Now, uh, tell us, uh, since you started to, uh, can you mention yourself uh, the, let's say, three uh, technological challenges and how to finance them of the railway business in uh, next uh, decade, let's call it like yeah, this? I think the... The key advantage of our business, rail business, and I'm talking about passenger and freight, is the capacity which what we can transport on our networks. And in order to get, and because the network has a lot of investment cost, a lot of assets still in the books, so how to generate more throughput time, throughput volumes, this is the key driver, and therefore digitalization will help a lot. Okay, and uh, what about financing uh, the things? Where to find the money? Who should be the big uh, money box uh, for these new technologies? You, you will provide as a company, but yeah. we should buy it. Yes, uh, it, is, it will be go, it will run, and even with existing call for tenders and inv investments, there's a, a joint, I would say, joint financing. There will be down payments at the very beginning, but not 100%. Prorata payments in order to finance this, and then the big companies have to go to the banks or they have own cash in order to finance. It's always this big model which is necessary to be built. Okay, now let's go more uh, Eurasian. And uh, Mr. Long, uh, Mrs. Long, sorry, uh, I will turn with a direct question to you, m maybe rather political, and then back to these uh, uh, challenges. So, political question from someone who was writing this question in Latvian. 
So hopefully uh, there is a political context to it. So there is a different way how China is making investment decisions. So it is decided by government in many cases, like uh, the electricity uh, of the lines in uh, Belarus, where there was a great uh, cooperation. So do you think or know even that there are plans to electrify uh, uh, the lines uh, up until the Latvian border, as it was done to the Lithuanian border with uh, Belarus? So for us, of course, you may understand we are competitors in uh, our good uh, friends in the south with Lithuanians. So do you do this type of the business in the future, like near future? Um, I, I don't get any information about uh, ah. these uh, projects. Uh, but uh, I do agree with you that uh, uh, China has a kind of traditional way to promote uh, the economic cooperation. It is uh, uh, firstly to get some uh, very good uh, political uh, uh, relationship uh, with uh, uh, one country's government and then uh, get this agreement uh, to uh, develop some areas. Uh, but I think uh, um, uh, after uh, uh, more and more enterprises, they are trying to go global. They know that uh, they should respect the local uh, regulations, uh, uh, local tradition. So uh, that's why uh, we know that uh, uh, maybe sometimes uh, uh, we should uh, not go this uh, up to down a uh, process, but uh, we should uh, use some more bottom up process that is uh, to get uh, more um, cooperation um, uh, intentions uh, at the business level, and then uh, maybe after this. Uh, um, agreements uh, has some uh, uh, very good intention and then we can develop them and uh, with more support from the government. And now more this open question uh, to you. What do you think are the technological challenges? How to overcome, how to finance them uh, for railway business in the uh, next decade? Um, I'm not uh, quite good at uh, all those uh, technical, <laughs> technical uh, issues, but uh, uh, I think uh, maybe how to integrate all those resources uh, uh, by some digital measures uh, will be very important in the future. Because if uh, every country or every company just uh, develop their own system, then uh, it will cause a lot of waste of resources. So uh, uh, I think uh, if we can integrate them, uh, in a, a big a border uh, framework, then uh, it will uh, be kind of a win-win situation for all parties involved. And what about, let's call it Chinese standard? Do you think that there sh will be developed the one? Because up until now, I understand if you want to enter uh, the market to, you know, let's say, uh, take part in this real Baltic uh, thing, uh, then you have to comply with uh, certain European standards. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the standardizations? Should it go international, inter-European or inter-Eurasian? I can't even pronounce it. Uh, so what about standardization? How should we solve this problem? Too much of standards, don't you think so? This also somehow dumps our technological uh, progress. Uh, I think, uh, uh, of course, uh, the Chinese company would like to uh, get more involved in all those uh, Baltic uh, uh, railway development projects. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, um, all these companies will go to those uh, uh, very public uh, uh, tenders, and uh, uh, I don't think that they will have any um, political privileges. <laughs> so, so uh, I just can give you some very uh, general uh, answers to this question. I don't have more details about that. And there is one very particular that also goes to you since you are having microphone technically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think about the electronic seal concept for uh, seamless transit uh, transportation between China, between China and Europe via 1520? Uh, um, Slage. Uh, what are the challenges and how to overcome them? Do you have uh, a solution? Pardon the. So, what do you think about <laughs> electronic <laughs> seal concept? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> don't what give it means. Too much honestly. technical questions. Sorry. Okay, so we pass it to <laughs> some technical <laughs> colleague. Okay, yeah, no problem. Someone has an answer to this. Yes. Uh, I, I have yes. Oh, can you I, explain? I may yes. have a guess. Seal is the safety integrity level, mm -hmm. which is a European uh, safety level. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, I think this is a, it's a worldwide uh, classification which type of safety level is needed in case you are 
ground transportation, aircraft transportation okay. in order to have a safe uh, operation. Okay, let's uh, now go to Alexander uh, Kochulov. Uh, so digital logistics is nice, but uh, what about next technological uh, challenges and uh, how to finance them? Do you know the answer? You know solutions to be provided, but probably you see the world of your competitors, uh, what kind of things we should pay attention for digitalization, modernization, what are your top three priorities on this? Uh, вы можете ответить на русском? На русском. Да, да, конечно. Да. Uh, я в своем докладе говорил, uh, uh, и сейчас need, uh, может, скажу. Someone needs uh, headphones for translation, right? Wolfram, Wolfram, yeah. you don't. Uh, uh, да, we will bring you some, some two or three, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> да, да, продолжайте, извините. Uh, мой ответ может показаться банальным, но на самом деле любой транспорт в цене товара это транспортная составляющая. И за все платит груз, кто бы что ни говорил. Вот. Поэтому, учитывая, что эффекты от цифровизации получают как клиенты, так и поставщики услуг, к которым могут относиться железные дороги, порты, э, они будут инвестировать в развитие для того, чтобы оптимизировать свои затраты и повышать свою конкурентоспособность. А основной, основные вызовы, которые нас ждут в будущем, знаете, я вот сегодня первый раз выступал без трибуны. Да я думал, смогу я или нет, получится у меня или нет. Ну, в итоге я сделал шаг, и на самом деле за два года развития цифровых технологий, то, что я наблюдаю, это готовность переосмыслить бизнес-процессы ручные в компаниях, перевести их на цифру. А там есть еще другие вызовы, связанные с персоналом, связанные с пересмотром своих бизнес-моделей. Поэтому основной вызов все-таки будет это сделать первый шаг. Не попробуешь, не поймешь. Okay. Uh, а как насчет, uh, где найти денег? Для, кто будет про это платить? Мы uh, ведь uh, ну, привыкли, что на самом деле вся uh, составляющая часть uh, идет на самом деле про грузы, не про uh, там, людей, uh, ну, перевозки пассажиров. Uh, в смысле, может быть, должна быть другая схема, всего этого финансирования, модернизации всего, всей железной дороги? Ну, я не могу сказать сейчас про всю железную дорогу, модернизацию, но в конечном итоге за все платит груз, я именно ответил. То есть любой транспорт сегодня является транспортной составляющей в цене продукции, поэтому его воспринимают. И любой грузовладелец, он был бы счастлив, если бы транспортная составляющая стремилась к нулю, для того, чтобы быть эффективным и конкурентным. Поэтому э, за все все равно будет платить и всегда груз, либо человек, если это касается пассажирских перевозок. Okay, хорошо. А цену этих преобразований определит уровень технологии и ее текущее состояние. Окей. И теперь мы вернемся к мистеру Хименес Отеро, международному вице-директору. И вы нам показали этот хороший пример вашего страны. But uh, what about financing scheme of these modernization projects in Spain? There are people from Latvia, because the question is also in Latvian language, is uh, Spanish uh, state budget co-financing uh, these modernization projects of the infrastructure, uh, how it works, or it was always the European money used? Well, yes, along all these years, and uh, we have uh, been supported by three main uh, uh, audience of funds. Uh, first of all, uh, in order, it's not the main one, but it's, uh, it's uh, basic European money from the European funds. Uh, has been explained this morning. Around 25% of the, of the financing has been uh, from uh, European money and uh, regional funds and all these kind of different uh, alternatives. And uh, could be 40% uh, uh, or 30% has come from general budget of a state. Mm. So, public money, but uh, national, public money. And uh, the rest could be around uh, 45, and it's uh, from debt. And debt uh, has been uh, taken by the company, by Adif. We are a public company, we belong to the Ministry of uh, Public Works, and uh, we are in charge of uh, all related to infrastructure management, and including the stations. <laughs> I, I insist on that include the station because the station is a very clear uh, origin of, of funds. So, 
And this is an uh, economical scheme, and uh, we need to recuperate to, uh, for the debt, paying the debt, for mainly is uh, the uh, European Investment Bank. When I, I, I have remember, I have forgotten, PPP. Uh -huh. uh, Public-private public partnership. Public partnership. In some cases, <laughs> I, I will come again to stations. Uh, we have a very nice example of, of station in Malaga station uh, that uh, was uh, thought, uh, fully reforized when arriving high speed. And then um, the total cost was around 120 million euros. And uh, uh, Adif pays, paid only 20. And 100 was paid by private sector that it's in charge of all the... Uh, now this station is partially in a station, mainly in a station, but it's also a shopping center, and the there's cinemas and a hotel, and uh, we invest also, Adif invested on the parking area. It's a nice, nice, because the parking is not only for the station, or also for the shopping. <laughs> so uh, PPP is uh, a very interesting uh, alternative. It's uh, not for the full development of a line, but for aspects because the full development of the line is a risky business. So privates don't like risk. And the risk is for the public side. And then, uh, but there are some aspects that there has been already uh, enough developed, for example, and uh, signaling. Uh -huh. we have, or, or signaling or electrification, or, uh, but uh, not civil works, but signaling. We have developed a PPP uh, uh, project and uh, uh, finally, we pay all, but it's uh, and, uh, 20 years of, uh, of uh, uh, time. So, but this has been the, the, the scheme, the main scheme for, for uh, money, obtaining money. And since you went through modernization of a, that kind you explained us, now can you make a next step, a list of a wish list of your countries or, or Europe's uh, general approach or, or very like local solutions for where whatever kind of top technology you'd like to mention could help us to betterize this business of railway? Well, uh, I, I, I'd like to insist uh, also is related with the question. Uh -huh. For us, I mean, high speed is only is a tool, it's an opportunity in our case for a construction of new high speed lines. It's not necessarily that these new lines will be absolutely high speed. I don't like to mention the super high speed project that I personally, I, 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 I You're <laughs> it's afraid. not clear for <laughs> me. But uh, uh, it's an opportunity. This opportunity, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, an, uh, as, as a push ahead all the railway system of the country. I, I like, uh, I see the railway tick. It's uh, an opportunity of investment with uh, European money, of course, but for the three countries, this an opportunity of an spreading the benefits for over all the network and pushing ahead all the system or railway system, including a station, including uh, commuters, including freight and, and passengers. So it's an opportunity to, to push the, the, the whole uh, system. And then your question was? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a uh, question of uh, money, uh, how to finance it, well, uh, these yes. new technologies. No, but it is, should, you it were be, should, it be, should it be always uh, the government's money or EU money? Should we No, no, uh, it's, uh, uh, we have a lot uh, a big uh, debt. The debt of Adif is around uh, 15,000 billion euros. Uh, but it's because we have paid for a third of, of, the, of the works. But we are obtaining incomes from uh, collateral uh, business, from uh, uh, charges from the use of the tracks, from each uh, new uh, possibility that we can imagine, and to pay back the debt. So it's uh, an equilibrium of, of, of mm -hmm. money. For uh, high speed, it's uh, by law, uh, European list, never uh, uh, can be subsidized. So it's commercial service. Okay. So I'm sure that all of us will continue offering and uh, local services, regional services, and uh, in cities, uh, subsidized by, by local governments. Of course, always each time more and more in open market, but with uh, uh, public money, they will come to the 
rail system. And can I clarify just as a journalist, uh, is it a Spanish law or European law? European. The, the Always, we had European. So even Rail Baltica, you are saying even Rail Baltica as a high-speed line will be never subsidized but if it runs out of uh, like uh, general for, economic for logic operation. or something. Okay. For operation. So in Spain, there are some regional services, high-speed services running over new high-speed line. They are subsidized. But these regional services, but not commercial services, Understand. and uh, Madrid, Barcelona. Okay. So, All but right. uh, could be for freight, yeah. could be for regional uh, offers, uh, could be. But okay. uh, it's the European law. Okay. Good. So when I go with the train from Riga to Madrid with a night train one day, it will be not subsidized. I pay full price for it. Of course. It. Good. It, will be, it, it will be only for rich, very rich people going from Riga um, to Well, Madrid. hopefully I will be rich in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Now we go to Uwe. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Lechner, uh, you've been talking about cooperation and opening minds and uh, different mindsets and something. But the question here was risen by someone how to motivate employees to open their minds for these innovations or and the best practices. Can you, you know, make some tips? Uh, so how you do it in, uh, in your uh, big and well-known company? Yeah. yeah, it's quite an important question. Ah. How to motivate the people? Because finally, we are acting in a people business. Yes. Um, how are we are doing that? At first, to be frankly, and not to close the eyes or the ears with something what is not reality. That is quite important. Secondly, what is important, and you are here in, in Latvia, and a very good example for that, to learn languages mm. and to communicate in languages. And not only the language is important, also the culture after this language is important. Yeah? And in my process, mm -hmm. I'm just now, in the last 10 years, learning that a lot of Chinese people, on example, are learning Russian. Logical. Yeah? Uh, mainly, okay, our communication is in English, yeah? but uh, also to understand the Russian point of view means also to know the Russian language and to communicate in Russian. Yeah? To my Russian friends, I'm every time explaining, hey, you have to learn English or Chinese. Yeah, please do it quite quick. Yeah. Um, and the third point is motivating people also to organize an exchange of people with, with certain different markets. To learn how the markets are, are acting or the people in the markets are acting um, is in a result an own experience what the people need. Yeah? And a lot of young people we have at the moment, we are sending to China, we are sending to, to Russia, we are sending to Poland and, and to learn more from the places where our activities are happening. And on a background of what you just said, can you name top three digital Solutions, challenges, something that uh, should be now inserted into railway business as a you know, necessity. And the first is, in my understanding, an IT sales tool which is connecting people 24 hours, seven days a week. That means that this tool has also been prepared in certain different languages. We are just now working in Chinese, in English, in Russian and in German for this tool. It's one thing. A second thing I, um, we are very, very pushing at the moment to look who have this which interest in the whole supply chain. And that is not only transportation, that is also the foreign trade process to exchange data and who is frankly for this exchange and who is only looking to get data to use their own benefit. That is the second question, because only if this will be clear, blockchain will work, because blockchain is an is a, is a open database system. Yeah? And the third uh, IT issue, what we are just now um, developing, is to monitor multimodal solutions, because we as railway people are offering our service in a terminal terminal perspective. Mm -hmm. But finally, the client is asking us for a door-to-door -door service. 
And the door-to-door -door service means also be connected with sales processes and e-commerce uh, in, 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 in a larger view to be competitive to our, our modes of, also of transportation. Now, should we open it to the barcode? You know technology of the blockchain when you scan barcode in a shop and then it says that, let's say, uh, a green tea from China was exported uh, and there was uh, too much of uh, gasoline used uh, f uh, instead of, you know, good uh, um, cargo train or, or, or something, and people are not ready to buy it because, you know, they, they know all the list of product where it was assembled, packed, uh, uh, exported, and even put it yesterday or day before yesterday in this very shelf where I'm going to make a decision. This will make your life... Uh, as a logistics uh, engineers, much more crazy. I don't want to work for your company than in this case. Or shouldn't we do this so public that the blockchains, everyone can control the world uh, of product, of that very product? It is a challenge. We have to learn that is a real challenge for us. That is a challenge for the further development. Yeah? If our client is not iron mental motivated, yeah? okay, he wouldn't do it. But if the discussion is continuing, however, in European Union, however, in certain different countries, as it is, we will, we will have in the upcoming years also changing requests from partners, from people uh, in Asia, in, in, in also the CIS countries, absolutely for sure. Yeah? And that is in the future one of our strongest arguments. We have to organize the exchange of, of, of services, of products, of materials in, on this, in this world in another kind uh, of transportation. That is a must for us. Yeah? Uh, nobody can, uh, can, can uh, at the moment, open the eyes for a project what is already in discussion, but especially between the Chinese and, and, and the Kazakhian and Russian railways, to have a high-speed train from China to Europe, yeah? up to European border, because inside Europe it is very, very difficult. Yeah? But on this way, in more or less 25 hours to go from China to the European border, Every 20 minutes, with 350 tons, with 350 kilometers per hour. That is a project, I think it is coming on. It will change the whole absolutely present transport modes with ocean freight and with air freight. I don't know how long it does it take, maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years. Yeah? But that will be changed. And um, the good news is that the railway people are involved in this project, however. Great, so uh, Belt and Road Initiative and works. Uh, now, can I uh, ask for your reaction? We've been talking about this now for 10 years, and now here is reaction. You see it. So can you judge, as a, I understand you are more uh, looking on a, on a strategic level, that we are actually ready for re this uh, Chinese initiative, of re uh, Belt and Road Initiative, uh, technically ready to provide all interlinks, all signalings, and all whatever systems we need to be in blockchain uh, connected, or how far we are from that achievement? you think, from uh, um, Asia's perspective or China's perspective? Um, I think uh, uh, in a foreseeable future, uh, I think uh, I can see the very bright picture, uh, not only for all those tar cargoes, all those freight, but also for passengers, because uh, it sounds uh, really uh, charming <laughs> if we can travel directly from China to European border. Uh, but of course, uh, I just agree with you that uh, actually, even currently, all the technical uh, issue has already been solved. There are no technical difficulties, but uh, just need more cooperation between governments. Uh -huh. So no signaling systems should be changed or installed or modernized. The government negotiations should be what? Intensified, probably. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is something I'd li like to learn uh, from. Yes, please, your reaction. Uh, you are just in between of this game, isn't <laughs> it? Exactly, we are between, but actually yeah. I want to underline that uh, 
Two years ago, the Georgian government, first in the history around the world, implemented blockchain in the uh, Ministry of Justice. So from that time, all the transactions, land acquisition, real estate, is on blockchain. And we do some support in different countries already. However, to catch up for freight business, it's more difficult because we have signaling on digital on part of modernization project, which is company, Chinese companies uh, make construction. However, I want to uh, go back again to the, all the players should follow one rule. Because if we will install digitalization in different parts of whole railway, but another neighbor country is far away from this idea, mm -hmm. then we don't have full service. But do you think that in the real world, uh, this, uh, like, it's to simplify is to the level that the charger connectivity is the same everywhere in the world? Like, mini USB knows every school children in good, China and good Latvia. Good example is the telephones, mobile telephones. So, before it was like a push to use a telephone. Now, yeah. nobody go even to the bathroom without yeah. talking. So, <laughs> of course. So, this is the main point. And uh, what is it? digitalization? It's a time. We save time, so we save the cost. Okay. And uh, when Mr. Uwe mentioned some humor issue about open the mind, I have good idea, now I open my mind, I have good idea for Chinese investment, uh -huh. issue of <laughs> electrification. Please go via Georgia, because we are fully electrified 100%, and you have a low cost for electrification. Wow, yeah. good. So almost agreement. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> Signature. Okay, we will celebrate <laughs> during tonight you. Uh, if you go for uh, uh, this type of agreement. Okay, um, can I also then uh, go to Madame Kirilova? So now, uh, you as a professor for that kind of the things, can you help us uh, with a the solution? There was the people who were saying that maybe digitalization or anything else can help for this seems like a bottleneck problem here in the real Baltica building a picture in the Baltics uh, of these uh, interconnectivities with 1520 and uh, uh, real Baltica and uh, how we should uh, you know uh, scope with this have you learned uh, necessity for interaction or a good uh, uh, suggestion from the friend uh, it seemed like there are people who are just thinking, should it be Spanish stories, should it be different stories? You can answer in Russian, of course. Good question. Thank you very much. And I would like to start away from digitalization and return to infrastructure. For the cost to go, there is the first infrastructure of all of the countries которые участвуют в этой логистической цепи. И если не будет инфраструктуры на линейных участках дороги или не будет инфраструктуры на точечных объектах и на границах между странами, тогда как бы мы красиво не цифровали это все, ничего не проедет и все остановится. И поэтому сначала должен быть вопрос решен наличие инфраструктуры для грузоперевозок. И это такой тоже достаточно интересный вопрос, а, ровно такой же, как что раньше, курица или яйцо. Ну, а у вас что... есть ответ, наконец-то? Я отвечу, как я как эксперт это считаю, да? Курица или яйцо раньше, груз или инфраструктура раньше. Я считаю, что развитие инфраструктуры должно быть синхронизировано с развитием промышленности и с развитием пассажиропотока, ну, то есть населения, которое перемещается. И тогда мы добьемся вот той интеграции всей этой платформы, которая позволит нам в зависимости от прогноза грузопотока расширять и точечные и линейные объекты инфраструктуры. И сейчас, как я уже в своей презентации говорила, мы эту работу делаем совместно с российскими железными дорогами, совместно с Министерством транспорта. Транспорта. Мы смоделировали те узкие участки пропускной возможности нашей инфраструктуры. Совместно также с определенными странами ведем переговоры. В частности, вот, например, граница России, где Забайкальск, Маньчжурия. Это такой достаточно загруженный пограничный переход, который требует расширения и модернизации. И одновременно делать цифровой двойник коридора, то есть всю эту информацию свести вот в эту логистическую платформу, где будет цифровой двойник коридора с указанием всех маршрутов и участков и их загрузки в зависимости от тех грузопотоков, которые стекаются туда, на эту границу между странами. 
И тогда, когда мы эту информацию видим, анализируем ее в динамике, у нас появляются верные решения по дальнейшему развитию и инфраструктуры, и логистических возможностей и сервисов. А те операторы, которые на этих участках оперируют и на этих коридорах, они, безусловно, развитие своего бизнеса, увеличение объемов своего подвижного состава контейнеров должны тоже производить в зависимости от того, как будут двигаться грузопотоки и развиваться инфраструктура. А скажите, вот я слышал, что у нас в Латвии должны все-таки остаться две очень важные сопоставляемые. Это Rail Baltica, как, скажем, европейского стандарта и того, ну скажем, старинного стандарта. Да? Потому что на самом деле ведь грузы в латвийские порта идут с российской стороны, там, с Китая, с Казахстана и так далее. Как вы видите, насколько мы вот сейчас, может быть, как-то слишком вникаем в это переживание, как там интерконтент? нектабилити и так далее, все это должно происходить. Может быть, это смешно просто с точки зрения. Я просто слышал, что московская, санкт-петербургская э, железная дорога, ну, где люди, перев... это уже э, не такая широкая, как э, старинного образца. И также Петербург-Хелсинг, это уже европейский. Может быть, э, из-за постройки Rail Baltic скоро и в России будут строить другие, э, скажем, линии в сторону балтийских стран. В России и в странах с колеей 15-20, безусловно, при пересечении границ нет проблем в перегрузке либо в смене колесных пар. Однако, на мой взгляд, это не является проблемой, потому что, в частности, с Китаем мы работаем по разной колее, Белоруссия, Брест, Малашевич работает по разной колее. И какую колею у себя, какую инфраструктуру строить, это решение того государства, Конечно. которое хочет это делать. Но, безусловно, нужно предусматривать, как будет происходить сопряжение. В Испании тоже другая колея 1672, и, соответственно, мы э, тоже понимаем, что есть э, внутри Европейского Союза эта разница колеи. И, э, как коллега рассказывал, очень хорошая презентация, и э, было понятно, что там э, много вопросов уже решено, но есть опять-таки определенная нестабильность между Испанией и Францией да, в перевозках. Вот от этой нестабильности, от этих рисков мы должны уходить при проектах проектирования новых стандартов, новых инфраструктур. Вот это, мне кажется, нужно все учитывать. И опять-таки отталкиваться все-таки от потребностей потребителя, что нужно конечному потребителю услуги, что нужно отправителю груза, что нужно пассажиру. Ему нужно удобство, быстрота, комфорт и приемлемая цена. Вот четыре вещи, которые мы должны предложить нашему потребителю. От него надо отталкиваться, от его желаний и потребностей. With uh, microphones, they can, you know, uh, run. Don't be shy. <laughs> We are online for a whole day. You know, people are watching us in Facebook and uh, Latvia's Delstelsch uh, website, and there are many fans. So why don't you become popular now with your question or comment? No. Okay. Okay. They are happy with uh, so far uh, mm -hmm. what we talk. So um, can I also ask, I don't know, this is an open question, who would uh, pick it up? How about... Um, these uh, many, many standards and the reality that, uh, let's say, Germans will be or are already first with this type of uh, new hydrogen uh, uh, train, but then there are old type of uh, uh, trains as well. Uh, how this damages our life or this is like reality, it will be never overcame because financing is, is lacking. How we should, you know, The influence, do we pay more if we don't uh, modernize everything in one night or uh, who can comment on this? Digitalization and the real 
uh, you know, no one probably bought a new iPhone which was presented yesterday in the United States. Well, but you should, huh? if you are digitally uh, native, you have to have most modern technologies. This makes your life more easier. But you are so conservative, looks like. Huh? Don't pick up this. Uh, why, why don't you have the newest iPhone? So how to, how to scope with the newest technologies and realities uh, of our financial realities of the governments, for example? Well, for, for me, it's clear. You have to speak, or somebody has to uh, speak about uh, the egg and the chicken. Uh -huh. For me, uh, first is infrastructure. This is the main bottleneck. But you want to, 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 to take all benefits from the infrastructure at the same time you need at the same time you need digitalize and always being a standard uh, difficulties of uh, the the relationship with uh, countries of european union need to be seamless same system ERTMS, real ERTMS, and uh, in the others is the same electrification of course is the same but also all digital uh, systems that allows and uh, putting your offer on the market and uh, facilitating and uh, the use of your paths and uh, it's absurd that we need to, to put on the market the railway paths with uh, one year in advance. It's absurd. So digitalization need to be is necessary to short this kind of uh, absurd things around the railway. But in fact is why I say it. Rail Baltica is the real opportunity for solving infrastructure bottlenecks and at the same time incorporate on the same time all the other elements of the and railway system, efficient, modern, competitive, open to road, mainly road and shippers, and, but first, of course, infrastructure, but you are going in the right way. No Thank doubt. you. Thank you. This no was doubt. exactly and what we wanted. Standard. <laughs> you should so, say. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> okay. What about these technologies? Can I ask you a question, maybe from the point of view of Alstom? Maybe there are technologies we shouldn't go and buy because they will actually come very quickly and die very quickly. So we shouldn't invest into these. There are people who are saying that they are waiting for hydrogen cars on the streets. They are not going for electric cars because they think this is just, you know, intermediate uh, five or ten years uh, situation. Maybe in railway business that's the same. Yes, it's always uh, difficult to project uh, the future, but uh, I think the, some basic uh, fundamental elements from a technology point of view will drive the future. There will be some elements which go to a dead end, for sure. I don't know which ones. For sure, we are looking for sustainable solutions in the future. But uh, answering as well to your point, uh, do we think and do we realize that there will be a global standardization? No. No. There will be no global standardization. There will be certain levels of standardization. However, even if you make some specifications on um, performance uh, requirements, the solutions which will fulfill this will be then different. Even looking at the European uh, uh, ETCS, it, I think it's 15, 20 years old, we are now on level 2, baseline 1, 2, 2.1, 2.3 and so on and so forth. So there are always evolutions of these technologies. We should not be afraid about these evolutions. We should be prepared how to answer to the different answers of the needs. And we should be reactive in order to, to work on this in a clever way. And secondly, uh, answering as well, what is chicken and egg? What is customer and what is supplier? As well, if customers align themselves for some level of standardization, this would help as well our sector in order to have better competitive uh, solutions compared to other uh, mobility means. Is it ship? Is it airplane? Is it street? So that this bonding effect could be realized as well. And uh, since you are sitting next to your Chinese colleague, and I know that you don't work for a Chinese company like Alstom yeah. here in, in, uh, in uh, Europe, but still, can I ask you first and then you maybe comment from Chinese perspective, don't you think that now, because of the progress that was made in China, we are exactly lagging behind and, uh, let's say, standardization and even modernization and new technologies are more developed by, by Chinese companies because they really invest, uh, would it be their own uh, state budget or anyone, and uh, so it means they're financing their own development more than we do now in this decade. 
they are quite uh, unactive in Europe. Yes, I think, uh, and Alstom is as well active in the Chinese market. However, the equal level playing field is not equal. Mm -hmm. This is one statement. So who therefore, win if who wins? Sorry? Who wins uh, if it's not equal? Who is the winner? Uh, uh, the one who has not uh, the so much uh, competitive uh, burdens to bury, so for sure. And uh, CRRC, just one example, is by far the biggest railway manufacturer worldwide. The number two, three, four together is equal to CRRC. So therefore, I think uh, the power of uh, purchasing, the power of production is in the hands of the CRRC. We should not dream. Okay, what about the uh, Chinese? Happy, probably. Nice picture for you. Mm. <laughs> uh, actually, just I mentioned that in my presentation that there are uh, several different stages of our development. Uh, as I know that at the first uh, stage, when we uh, uh, imported a lot of uh, products and also uh, technologies, uh, actually we uh, cooperated with the Alstom. Uh, from France and also with Siemens from uh, Germany and also another uh, Japanese uh, uh, companies at that stage. But then, just you said, uh, in order to fulfill the local uh, uh, special demands, uh, so they do some uh, upgrade uh, of all these technologies and uh, do some, a lot of self-innovations. So I, I think that uh, uh, during the whole process of the development uh, of our railway network, Actually, uh, a lot of uh, uh, new technologies were uh, used or is now, are now using, uh, are now used, uh, are being used. So, um, actually, I think uh, all these uh, new technologies uh, actually uh, be used in two different aspects. One is in the construction process, uh, for example, um, we use all those uh, uh, low-carbon uh, uh, trains uh, because uh, you can not forget that uh, we are also a very strong supporter to the uh, Paris uh, Climate Change uh, Agreement. So uh, definitely we uh, would like to use those uh, more green trains, uh, especially during the process when we are going to increase a huge number of all those trains. And second, I think all these new technologies, especially the digital technologies, should be used in those uh, a service provided uh, when uh, all these trains are in operation. Uh, many people mentioned those APP. Uh, actually, China also has this kind of APPs, so people can buy tickets uh, online by all these APPs. But uh, uh, honestly speaking, I don't think it's uh, uh, as good as those uh, European APPs. <laughs> because Why? when I traveled, I found that uh, uh, they are more uh, easy to use. Uh -huh. So I think uh, the reason why I think uh, um, Chinese, uh, actually China railway company, the biggest company, this uh, state-owned company, should uh, invite uh, more um, uh, private sectors uh, uh, to provide these kind of services to uh, intervise more uh, market uh, uh, oriented uh, uh, competitions between all these uh, uh, companies to provide more uh, better uh, services to the customs. Good. Any remarks, questions, comments, something that uh, now comes? Yes, please. And uh, Dans, uh, we will provide you. A microphone, just present yourself. Uh, you swear to not really love this, done you? Yeah, chairman, uh, spokespersons, uh, thank you very much for the word. Uh, my name is Dan, I'm uh, from CMA, CGM. Uh, today we uh, the, lots of talking about the Rail Baltica, M many good words. I may, uh, may I add uh, some more good words. Uh, as you know, the Rail Baltica is uh, partly built and operational. And uh, I'm talking about uh, Sheshtokai, uh, the 5 feet, uh, 4.8 feet interchange station with uh, capability of transferring of uh, 400 Teus uh, per day. And uh, I visited this station uh, three months ago, and I find out uh, that uh, there's no people, no trains, uh, no containers, only crows are working uh, <laughs> under the rusty rails. And in the same time, uh, CMAC GM, uh, uh, thanks uh, to Dr. Leishner, Spasibo Gospoje Kirillo, we are uh, from China to Duisburg, are transferring lots of containers sometimes through the breast. 
and sometimes uh, we wait for two, three days for reloading. The breast is overloaded, as you know. Uh, breast is just three kilometers south and from Shestokai, from Lithuania. Uh, so have you advised me why this interchange station, which is technical already, mm. do not operate uh, till today? Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you in advance. Should we, should we have a, a no. political or technical <laughs> explanation? It's, it's, it's absolutely a political explanation. But it's not in the interest of our Russian partners. And the Russian partners decided, whoever it was, not to go into, into Europe uh, for the China uh, containers uh, on a borderline between Lithuania and Poland. But it's absolutely from our side also a political protectionism to support the Kaliningrad region, to support uh, the, the common agreements between Kazakhstan, Russia and, and Belarus and uh, the future will show Shestokai will be opened and Kaunas will be opened. I'm absolutely convinced for that. And one of the reasons why I today signed an MOU between DB Cargo Eurasia and the Latvian Railway is to show also to our Russian friends, we will take just now the cargo from the Baltics via our way. Yeah, and maybe <coughs> our colleagues will understand it in the future but it is not the right way politically to push or to, to limit this market as it is at the moment. Yes, absolutely clear. And my Russian friends knows it, but I'm a clear speaking guy. So you want to, uh, one more question to this? Oh, yeah, yeah, please. Пожалуйста. Ну, учитывая, что мы занимаемся очень много прикладными вопросами, Вот, я не совсем э, согласен с господином Увы, поскольку мне известно, на сегодняшний день российские экспортеры используют латвийские железнодороги для транзита, для перевозки в тот же Калининград. И на мой взгляд, все-таки там вопрос больше именно в экономических вопросах. Вопрос, как конкурируют между собой участники-транзитеры. Это вот как маленькое дополнение, но это достоверная информация, потому что я знаю этих клиентов, они работают через электронную торговую площадку в России, И мы как раз с ними ведем переговоры, следующим шагом сделать эти перевозки из России транзитом через Латвию в Калининград. Поэтому есть нюансы, и они действительно... Есть, есть, есть. Да, спасибо. Важно здесь четко понимать, что есть одна сторона медали, есть и другая. Спасибо. Важное дополнение. Но э, не только сегодняшняя ситуация, но ситуация надежды балтийских стран, что насколько мы станем серьезным... Э, путем транспорта в ситуации, когда э, Рейл Болтика заработает. Э, какие геополитические, скажем, в смысле э, изменения она принесет? Другой поток, другого рода вообще, насколько вы, скажем, согласны с той э, идеей, что Рейл Болтика на самом деле никогда не будет перевозить э, грузы с э, Востока. Это всегда будет только транспортный коридор с севера на а юг? Почему? А, не знаю. Есть такие люди, которые говорят, что это две разные вещи, тот, и тот никогда пример, не будет да. коннекции. Тот между... пример, который я привел, все-таки за политическими аспектами можно всегда легко прикрыться, и там ну, дальше кто, кто разберется. Но мне кажется, в транспорте дьявол всегда в деталях, и надо внимательно рассматривать всю сквозную цепочку, как формируется сквозная ставка, насколько она справедливо распределяется между всеми участниками, тогда уже будет понятно, там, политическая составляющая или просто кто-то не в состоянии выдержать конкуренцию. А вы делали такие, может быть, дигитальные подсчеты, где видно, насколько по-другому составляется цена, там разного рода пере, перегрузка груза и так далее. Есть... Были такие подсчеты на ваших э, сайтах? Ведь это очень легко сделать. Вы знаете, если вы зайдете на сайт РЖД, там электронная торговая площадка в публичном поле, вы кликаете, регистрируетесь и начинаете с ней работать. Ага. Мы публичная компания, и преимущество ее как раз в том, что там, если вы видели, как формируется заказ, ставка раскрывается и все видно, сколько стоит, кто кому платит. Поэтому клиент понимает справедливость стоимости этой услуги транспортировки. Поэтому в будущем цифровые технологии, вот здесь коллеги mm -hmm. много об этом говорят, там, блокчейн, Это же открытость информации, да. это открытость всех составляющих. Да. Если мы будем готовы клиенту показать, как это работает, потому что на сегодняшний день 
Сложность в том, что нас зачастую фронтят, так сказать, экспедиторы, которые это формируют в непубличном пуле. И иногда в погоне за профитом определенным они могут сделать неконкурентным целой железнодорожной администрации. Мы же не знаем, что они предлагают клиентам в конечном итоге. Поэтому цифровые технологии очень важны, как раз они позволят открыться грузовладельцам, да, которые увидят, а сколько же стоит это, а как же это организовать на самом деле. Вот, вот это важный момент. Да, пожалуйста. Yes, please. Sorry. Yeah, Switch back to... Don't, you, you, you don't, don't worry, we can also speak in Russian. It's okay. not, so, not so important. Um, yes, the rating policy is, is a quite important instrument at the moment on which everybody is trying to get more benefits for transit. <coughs> As I explained before, yeah. the question is, and that is also a task for the Russian colleagues, for the colleagues from Kazakhstan, for the colleagues from Belarus, we have to, to be a little bit closer to the final clients, how in Asia and how in Europe, and that have to be developed. That means you need your forwarders you know, first. Secondly, and that is, that is for you, for your question, yeah. Real Baltica, for the future. Yes. Then the northern way will be opened. And you know also oh, yes. the government of the Russian Federation is doing a lot yeah, with the climate change that the northern way oversee will be opened. Yes. I'm absolutely convinced Riga with support and Real Baltica will be one of the best ways to use this oh, multimodal solution. Thank you. Don't ask me when it will be. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but hopefully in nearest future. I'd like to see profit of it. Uh, so my country might be become more rich uh, in the case of, of this event. Not only my country, I guess many will uh, be interested in this. So I see uh, many a little bit tired uh, faces, but uh, can we still make applause to our uh, um, good uh, friends here?